tell you a story about what happened. There was once one man, and he he was married. He had two children, but he had he was very very detached, very dispassionate, very dispassionate man. And uh, many things happened. People went and stole things from his house, and he didn't mind. People say, you know, like uh, you know, they took all your took your they took your donkey. He says, ah, it's okay. They can have. Maybe they need it. It's okay. He would never. Anything happened. He came home and uh, found his uh, his wife in bed with his friend. He said, "Hey, George, how you doing? Ah, okay, okay. Never mind. Don't worry. No, no, no. Don't hurry. Don't hurry. It's okay. Uh, I'll go for a walk and everything like this." And he was like, "Nothing is troubling this man." And it is said that uh, he was became so dispassionate. Then also. Even his children, they came and they said, "Father, what kind of father are you? You know, the people are calling you a fool. You are you are blessing them and all of this type of thing. You know, we don't want you anymore. We don't want to call you father anymore." Oh yes, you are quite right. It's okay. I'm very sorry about this, but uh, if you enjoy to call this man father, it's good. I think he's a very nice person. Call him father is good. Good. I also call him father. It's okay. So nothing could touch. Could rock him, you know. He was just so open and so generous, so detached, and somehow. In the end, he had to leave home because everything left him. He went to live in monastery, up in the mountain. In the monastery, a very simple place. His job each day, there was to go, and it was like a Japanese garden, like sand, and he would just go. And he would just take a rake and he would move in the sand and clean, pure thing like this, like a Zen uh, movement. And then after he finished, he did his washing and all these things he had to do. Then he would spend his day sitting on this rock, just sit in meditation, very happy, very happy, 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 happy. And it is said that uh, he was so empty of person. That he was almost invisible. Sometimes people would go in the garden and sit right next to him, and they're talking in private things. They did not notice him because he's so empty. So it said that news came hmm, to the king of demons. Hmm, the king of demons heard about this mortal, a human being, who is about to. Enter into nirvana itself, the pure state of pure bliss. And he said, "No, no, we can't. We can't afford this. No one from that world should come to nirvana, as long as we are here." So he called three of his most, uh, uh, what you may call, attentive demons. Come. They arrive, my lord. And they come. He says, "Yes, you have heard of this uh, monk, almost invisible monk." Yes, uh, my lord, we have heard. Uh, we cannot allow for a mortal to slip into immortality like this. You go and find something about him. He said, but actually, we were the ones who have been following him, my lord. We did everything to try and really to break him. We are the one who caused his friend to go and stay with his wife, but he, he, he's not he's not attached to anything. He must be attached to something. Yeah, well, I was the one who saw his children, and his children told him, "We don't want you as a father. You're not good enough," and it did not trouble him. Yeah, but there must be something. Go now, at once. Pay attention. So immediately off you go, fum fum fum. They all went. So the monk has finished his nice, beautiful garden, and he's sitting quite peacefully on this rock. When suddenly, three spirits come, and they're watching him, but he doesn't move. He's so detached. Hmm? Day one come, day two, nothing. He hasn't moved. Day three, nothing they can find. One week, two weeks, nothing they found. Hmm? Then one of them, sitting very close to the monk, begins to go into meditation also. 
<laughs> so the others come and go, hey, don't sit so close. Come, come. They sit and they are watching him. <laughs> so it said, now this monkey sitting under there, make his beautiful painting. That was his daily movement. And he was sitting under a huge tree, huge pine tree, sitting there. And nothing is happening. One day, a wind passes. And a little twig, because of the wind, a little twig drops inside the sand garden. Immediately, the monk <laughs> looks and he goes over and he leans over and takes the twig. Gets back into meditation. So the little demons, they look at each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so immediately they start to dance in the sand. And the monk became very, very angry. Very angry. He lost his invisibility, became bright green, basically, and shouting. Anybody wonder what happened? What happened to him? Like this. This is how he lost his peace. So the question is, what is your twig? <laughs> this is what the mind is here to find. What is your twig? Meaning the thing that will get to you. Because he has been growing up with you. He knows your moves. And he will press the buttons. <laughs> Try this one. You see? Are you strong enough? Are you clear enough? You see? This is a divine game. Yeah? And every part of it is good. Every part of it in some way is in service to you. But you must be smart enough to know that. Even the unpleasant things, you will use them. Now you've come to a beautiful place because you can see from your own place. But I am doing nothing at all. Maybe the mind will say to you, but you see, you didn't do anything for it. Huh? You wait. You think you can stay like that? Or you may say, but how can I keep this? And you think, yes, Muji, how, how can I keep this? And I will say, how are you keeping it now? You cannot keep it. If you can keep it, you will lose it. <laughs>